Hi, my name is Lee Williamson. Subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary. Hi, my name is Joby McEnough. Subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary. Hi, I'm Chris Binney, and I'm Jamaica's number one squash player and nine time Caribbean champion. And you're watching Reggae Boys Commentary. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and share button below. Yes, Reggae Boys Commentary, like and subscribe, yeah? Reggae Boys Commentary, like, share and subscribe. Yeah. Reggae Boys Commentary, <laughs> subscribe, like and share. Is that the right order? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. And welcome to Reggae Boys Commentary. This is the channel where we come together to discuss everything relating to Jamaican football. I hope everybody is doing well. As we get set, today is Wednesday, August 17, 2022. Where is time going? Like, seriously, where is time going? It's just going at a rapid pace. That's exactly how it's going. You can't just pause for a moment. But, you know, it keeps us busy, it keeps us active. So we keep up with what needs to take place. And certainly we do have things to discuss, <laughs> lots of things to discuss. And I eagerly look forward to your reaction to what has to be discussed. And I'm confident that what will be discussed is content that you will appreciate and really, really meditate on as we move forward together. So, Today we're going to talk about Omar Duke Holness, the man who received the Prime Minister's Youth Award in sports in 2012. But it's a little deeper than that. Omar Duke Holness, Wilma's boys, played Manning Cup when he was 14, 15. Captain of Jamaica's team that went to the under-17 FIFA World Cup in Mexico in 2011. A standout a player that was a cut above the rest in that time frame. Injuries, injuries, injuries hampered his career. And now, after those injuries, had some time in Major League Soccer, had some time in the United Soccer League with the Bethlehem Steel, with the Real Monarchs as well, decided to go across the Atlantic. And eventually he landed up in the northeast of England with Darlington FC, Spent two fantastic seasons there, accomplished a lot of his dreams, playing in England, one. Another one, scoring in the FA Cup. Scored the winner in the FA Trophy against Solihull Moors. He's done quite a bit. He played for Jamaica at the Under-17 World Cup, played for Jamaica at the senior team scored in the FA Cup, so it's part of Jamaica's squad at the 2015 edition of the CONCACAF Gold Cup, so yeah. He's been through, he's been done quite a bit. And last year he joined Bath City FC, so he went from the north to south. So where do we lie now with Omar Holness? Since 2014 he's picked up five caps for Jamaica, his last cap coming against the United States in a friendly last year. So, what is the deal? Best says documentary. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you doing? So, what is the deal? What is the deal with Omar Duke Holness? Well, Omar Duke Holness will not be returning to Bath City FC for the 2022-2023 season of the league. He will not be returning. He will be returning to North Carolina to finish up his studies. Remember he, from 2013 to 2015, he spent some time with the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where he spent two years. So <clears throat> his plan is to finish school. So that will be one more year and then return to football. So that is exactly what is happening right, right now. Omar is using
Omar is, is going to be going back to school. And then after that, he's going to look at and analyze his options for the future. So that's basically what happens. So yeah, Omar Holmes will be, in terms of the clubs that he will be looking at afterwards, we're talking about mostly teams that ply their trade in the United Soccer League, teams that are based on the, the East Coast, those are options. In terms of the opportunities that presents itself across the Atlantic, well, there are a few things that we can look at, and those opportunities lie with a team currently playing in League Two in England, and that team is called Hartlepool United. Hartlepool is a team that has greatly admired Omar Holness for quite some time. They They've enjoyed the way he has operated from his time in the Sunderland Academy and even during his time at Darlington. Hartlepool is also a team located within the Northeast as they play in County Durham. Their manager, Paul Hartley, an individual that used to represent Scotland. He was at Aberdeen at one point as well as a, as a player. And with Hartlepool now, he is looking for a midfielder that can fill a couple of gaps. And he's hoping Omar Honus can be an individual that can play 20, 25 games. So after school, we'll see. We'll see how things go, where, he, where he's concerned. So he says he's how old. Omar Holness is 28 right now. He's going to be 29 in March of next year. So March of next year, he's going to be 29 years old. So yeah, there is. So he's not old, but he's not necessarily young in a footballing playing sense. Can he still muster up a decent career in the game? Yes, he can. Does he have the ability to play a league two in England? Absolutely, 110%. So we've looked at the United Soccer League as options. We've looked at Hartlepool United. But what are the other places, are the opportunities? Daniel Rickett says to big up. And I'll say big up. Hope you are doing well. Where are the other opportunities? Where do those other opportunities lie? Well, it's no secret that... there has been admirers north of the border. And those admirers north of the border lie in Scotland. And Scotland is a compelling environment. And why do I say compelling environment? Because it has the ability to have fluid changes. You know, it really depends on how they're feeling. So. If a club is doing very well, they're going to feel like, oh, it's 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 fine. We have everything that we need, but back-to-back -back losses, and they're like, okay, yeah, we really need this. And and the truth is that the Scottish Championship, Scottish League One are, are avenues, are leagues that <clears throat> where there are interest where the interest lies for Omar Holness. But we shall see. We really shall see how how things open up in the future. For now what we can do is wish him all the best. So what we're gonna have to do is just be patient and see how things go. That's the only thing we can do right, right now. And hopefully, 
So we can see it. So, regular voice fans, how are you all doing? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about this? What are your thoughts about everything? Let's see what you guys have to say. Just drop them in the comments and let's take some of your questions, your comments, your concerns, and we just move from there. Give me your thoughts. How do you all feel about everything? Drop your comments below and we take it from there. Roderick Sharp, good morning. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Wholeness to me hasn't harnessed his full potential. Could have been a great, greater hold midfielder. Don't know if it's his fault or his environs, but nowhere near his peak performance. All right, a number of things to process here. Yeah, he he didn't start out as a holding midfielder. He didn't. He didn't start out as a holding midfielder. He he started out as an attacking midfielder, and, a, and and an individual that could operate as a number as a striker if needed, like he did against Panama in the Concacaf Under Seventeen Championship back in twenty eleven. So he's not a holding midfielder. He's he likes to refer to himself more as a box to box, because he says as a number ten he doesn't necessarily have the strength but he definitely sees himself as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And the, the fact is that injury has played a massive role as to why he has not progressed where he should have. Seizures has also contributed as well. So those two have been huge concerns. So that is major. And these are important aspects as to why. Things just haven't fallen into place at this point. So, So yeah, that's a situation with Omar Holness. So we'll see. Yes, Balotelli, nothing new here. Nothing new here, always an issue when it comes to the logistics. The team has not reached Austria as yet. The game is Saturday, and they have not reached Austria as yet. So that is where things are as it stand. Today is Wednesday, and in Europe, where they are six, seven hours ahead, so... It's Wednesday afternoon going into Wednesday evening in Europe. So Thursday, Friday, 
So you're at most going to have two training sessions prior to the first game. So bearing that in mind, what really should be the expectations of the team? Is it fair to expect high intensity performance from the team? It'd be difficult to do that, you know? It would be really different, difficult to have that sort of expectation. But you know, wish them all the best in terms of the performance eventually. Mm -hmm. But let's see. But still a lot of things to iron out, matters that need to be dealt with. It's just a really, really difficult situation, challenging one. But you know, it's 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 really 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 at some point you just have to say you know this is apathy this is frustrating and that is where things are as it stands. So what can you say? What can you do? Well, in life, you always have to have plan B and plan C for what it is temporary. So by 27 to 30, that is it for you, unless you're Messi or Ronaldo. So get that education first and go play football. Yep, once he gets that education, I do think minimum he can play another three more years in the game with his situation, with his knee. And then after that, who knows? But clearly, this is an individual that has the ability to play in Europe again, hands down, no doubt about it. Quite unfortunate. It really, really is. <sighs> but that is where we stand right now. This is a situation that we're in. And things have to change. They have to. You know? Tough luck, I thought he had a brilliant future, but life is like that at times. <clears throat> yeah, but it doesn't mean like it's the end of the road for Omar Holness. It just means that he, you know, he's taking a step back. He's enjoying married life. <laughs> he's going back to school and then he comes back into professional football. So it just means that 
he he rules himself out of contention for the Nations League friendlies and potentially the Gold Cup. But who knows? Gold Cup 2025 might be his chance. Can you imagine? Gold Cup 2020, Gold Cup 2015, he was part of it as a hmm, as a person who was in his early 20s and 2025, 10 years later in a Gold Cup squad. That would be something. But for certain, we'll keep you all up to date as it relates to the traveling situation with the reggae boys, the situation as it relates to Omar and his next move. So stay tuned for that. And you all will be kept abreast of the latest happenings and trends with the team. And with Omar Holness as well, I will alert you as to everything. If it's Hartlepool, if it's USL, if it's Scotland. Yeah, but he's almost 30 now, or he will be at the age by the time he's back. You see how we treat players that age 30 and beyond? Yeah, man, I see how we treat Hakka. <laughs> but yeah, I know exactly what you mean in all seriousness, though. We've had Joby McEnough play for Jamaica in his late 30s. We've had Hakka. I think Andre Blake is somebody that will play in his late 30s. Adrian Mariapa. Is he 35 now? Yeah. Going on 36. Wow. Where is time going? It's just flying. Flying with the wind, eh? But yeah, it is what it is. Very, very unfortunate. Simon, Adrian is a rare case, and the difference is he has always been here from day one. Yeah, he's always made himself available. Bar Gold Cup 2017 and 2019 due to injury, he's always made himself available. Pity, just I don't think he'll get 100 caps, but, you know, I believe that he's an individual that is a national treasure. I should always be given the, the level of respect, honor, support, drive in order to accomplish things. That is what is needed. But, Reggae Boys fans, what are your thoughts? He's a very good player, but he's lazy and not motivated, not physical, but the ball has his feet. Omar? Lazy? No, I think that's harsh. Lazy? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that. Why did they call Gareth in the last cycle when it was clear we needed wingers? Why didn't they call Gareth? We needed wingers. Yeah. Gareth could have played Gold Cup 2019, 2021. Knows the team, knows the system already. It's a shame why Gareth McCleary has not returned to national colors. An absolute shame. It really, really is. And yes, he's 35 now. At Wickham Wanderers. But guess what? Gareth is a baller, you know? It might be a league one that he's playing in, but guess what? Gareth is a baller. From his time at Nottingham Forest to know. He showed his promise at Bromley and then Forest and 
this spell in the Premier League with Reading. Yeah, and, 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 and now moving forward with Wickham. Scored against St. Lucia and scored two goals at the Gold Cup against Costa Rica and against El Salvador. Yeah. Just like the West Indies, once you're 30, you're out. Maybe it's a Caribbean thing of us. We'll discuss that at another time for sure. Definitely areas for us to, to process on this matter. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, this is where we are at this point in time. But, Reggae Boys fans, what are your thoughts? Regarding Omar Holness. If you can select JPL, we can pick League One players, especially. Oh, there you go. Hands down. Reggae Boys fans, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to Reggae Boys commentary for more content that will be coming your way. A lot more will be coming your way quite shortly. So stay tuned as a lot of excitement is on the horizon. A lot more content coming your way. So stay tuned for it. Hit that bell, hit that notification bell, and you'll get everything you need.